This is the Wendy Love Ed Show with Topher Kogan, sponsored by Karis Healthcare, 131 Inclusion Gallery, and Buffalo Co. Our guests today are Mika Borum, Travis Tidwell, Dr. David Raven, Alice Mangan, Xavier Claiborne, and Blair Hastings. This is season four, episode four. Oh, Wendy, Topher, you got a lot of love. Yeah, that's for sure. You got music and movies and friends and medicine. Yow! Is the show for me and you. The one you love to listen to. And oh, you got your friends. See it through. See, cause laughter is medicine too. Said it's medicine to be. You are tuned in to the Wendy Lovett Show with Topher Kogan, where we don't dispense medical advice and all of your health choices are your own. And here's Topher. Hey, Wendy. How are you today? I am doing well. Um, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Um, let's see. What else? You're Any new movies? movies? I know. I was just thinking that. <laughs> Jinx, no. <laughs> well, um, I haven't. I don't think I've seen any recent movies. I haven't either. I know it's. I think uh, it's hard because. Oh! 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 Did you? See I watched a really good documentary. Um, we only have like a minute and a half left. Okay. Uh, but I watched a really good documentary um, called "Americans in Bed," and what it was, it was just these like you know various couples talking about oh here's why we're married here's why we're in like a partnership and it was you know all types of couples so like from different backgrounds and cultures and also um uh sexual lifestyles so you mm -hmm. had uh purely monogamous you had uh polygamous you mm -hmm. had um straight lgbtq you know you had you know uh, various types of couples Everyone and from the salad. <laughs> yes, Everyone exactly. From the salad. Yeah. <laughs> and nice. it starts out really sweet, and there are couples that you know, like they're just like, oh, you know, cutesy, uh, cutesy. But then it gets serious, and you get into like couple stuff. Oh yeah, it's so good. It's good. Oh, I'll have to. I, I think I would enjoy that. Tell me the name of it again. Americans in bed. Oh, it's a bud. It's a, bud. it's a bud. It's a bud. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I like bud. it. Yeah. I'll, I'll definitely check that out. I love listening to the to people in their relationships and how they handle different things. I think it's helpful. You know, it's, it's educational. <laughs> yeah. All righty. Uh, is it time for Mika and Travis, our special guest? I think we should add our special guest to the conversation. All righty. We're, we're adding um, actor... Uh, director and producer Mika Borum back to the show. Thank you for returning. It's so great to see you. And Travis Tidwell, a musician who um, has just put out a new video. So welcome to the show. Uh, thank you guys thank for you. having me. I was so happy to see the new music video and song. I, I ran into it kind of on Facebook and then Mika, you sent me that message um, on Instagram, and I was like, yes, um, wow, so beautiful. Uh, Topher and I both were kind of wow. like, uh, so was that shot in Arkansas? Yeah, yeah, we shot the entire thing in Arkansas, um, which was nice because we could really, you know, utilize all the beautiful locations, and it, the Arkansas fit his song so well. Um, what happened with the whole thing was, um, we know uh, Travis's manager, Dave Fowler, really well. And so he sent us over uh, Travis's song and said, I've got this artist that I think you guys are going to just think is out of this world. 
listen to his song and let us know what you think. So we listened to Travis's music and we're like, oh my God, this is great. And so my dad and I started brainstorming on it and we just started thinking like that barn, that would be crazy. That over there, we need a single. Wow, that over there, because the song's just awesome. It's more, you know, it's like it's like an anthem, yeah. more than a song. It's you know, it's a whole vibe. It's, it's a good one. I appreciate that. Um, I uh, I've never shot a music video before, and so I guess on my end, I can say anything that I envisioned in my mind you know, that matched sonically the song, Mika and her crew definitely went super above and beyond and made that happen. And like she said, Arkansas definitely fits the Southern vibe. And honestly, uh, they just favor so much, because I'm from Tennessee and I live in Tennessee, but Arkansas and Tennessee share that same scenic quality pretty much when it comes to that. So I, I personally am so pleased with it and think she hit the ball out of the park with the video. Absolutely. I noticed the barn actually and the the waterfall and it just oh, so nice. it's, yeah, it's just beautiful and, and goes beautifully with the, the song. Um, so what was it like producing and creating this music video during a pandemic? How was yeah. <laughs> it was interesting. Um, you know, one of the things uh, was we were able to shoot the whole project with social distancing. So that's cool. Um, you know, since we had just Travis um, playing the guitar and singing uh and there's so much life with that too you know when he performs uh you know watching his hands on the guitar and you know all the head banging and all stuff there's a lot of action with just that so we didn't need to see a full band um for the video and so that helped with making it you know during a pandemic and uh with our crew too, you know, uh, it was, it was, uh, we had everyone drive out instead of fly out because we had our cinematographer, Robert Murphy came in. So he drove out from LA and that was a pretty, uh, day drive. <laughs> we had to calculate that in. And then also, um, our drone operator, Nico Knosa, he drove out. So, you know, he came out from Texas, so he had to like work that in. So it was, it was interesting. It took more time than it would have otherwise, but, um, yeah, you know, it was just, it was part of the, part of the flavor, but I'm glad, you know, I'm glad we were able to make some art right now. It's cool to like, you know, work with a badass like Travis and, and oh, be able to collaborate, and, you know, be able to get something fun going during this pandemic. Shoot, likewise, likewise, you know, it was, and I, I, I should probably mention this, I, before taking off as a solo artist, I, I was a hired gun uh, for other, other guys just kind of playing guitar for those guys and so I've been in some music videos but this was my first one being the guy yeah and, and so like Mika said it was definitely a little different you know given the circumstances of the world we uh, definitely took our precautions and nobody got sick we social distanced we wore our masks so we did everything we uh, we could do and it still ultimately looked like the world was normal in the video to me that that makes makes me happy so I love it but yeah, so uh, with filming that, though, it was cool, too. You know, also, another thing that was really neat with the video was um, the there's a, a Shelby Ford that's in the video. And mm -hmm. so Travis has some interesting tie-ins with them. Um, and they brought out one from Texas that we use that's like a special. What's the deal with that? With It's a special souped up. Yeah, so uh, Austin Mann is from Texas. He, I guess he's uh, in charge of the Southeast chapter, like, events and stuff for Shelby. And uh, um, by blessings and luck, I, uh, we, uh, Dave and I, we called Shelby and presented the song, and they loved it, so that's why we're here now. And uh, Austin's car is a one-off, and it's more it's more special than any super snake because of the paint stripe on it it's got this electric blue paint stripe that nobody else has in the world but him and i don't really know how or why that is but he said that and it's a very nice very nice 2013 super snake very yeah that that car too it's funny it's so so loud the engine is like so robust that when you were trying to talk to him like we were trying to move the car and give different directions I, can't hear. I, can't hear. <laughs> I mean the engine on that thing is to die for it is yeah did you have to use those like air traffic cones to the signal him him? To... yeah yeah a little bit we had some hand signals going for him <laughs> mm -hmm. had to talk about a lot of stuff either before or after when the car turned off so oh, loud. yes. 
And Wendy's back. I'm back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so Welcome back, sweet. Wendy. Hi, honey. <laughs> Hi. Oh, you guys are so sweet. Hi. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, yeah, we had the car in there. Um, and then it was funny, too, because so when we, our original plan with the barn in the video was we were going to put the car into the barn, but the barn on the bottom had a big, um, it had like a big piece of wood. And so we were going to build something to, to put it over. But when we got the car there, because the car is low to the ground, then we climbed upstairs and actually the upstairs part of the barn um, we changed a bunch of things around because it was such a special surprise to mix that in. And that ended up being one of the most awesome parts of the video. And the woman right. who owns that barn, um, she's really, really sweet. Her name's Linda. So Linda's dad built that barn with his hands. He'd worked at the sawmill. So he actually specifically cut each piece of wood in that barn. And she was just so awesome and ecstatic to have it uh, immortalized with Travis's awesome song in this music video. And like, it, it looks great in there. It looks so cool. Oh, it does. That's Love beautiful. Beautiful. Well, I think we're gonna take a look at the video. So it's called Catch Me If You Can, correct? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Um, and um, we're gonna, uh, I don't know if there's anything else that you'd like to, um, to say with the introduction of it. Um, well, uh, the uh, this is the single off of the upcoming album Catch Me If You Can, and uh, the album will be up for pre order digitally. If you like the song, you want to check out the rest of the album on August 9th, and it will officially drop the 14th. And you can check out additional information and find stuff on my website at thetravistidwell.com, and hard copies will be available there as well. Wonderful. Nice. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining us today and everyone enjoy this fabulous video and song.
In our health segment today, I'm joined by Dr. David Raven, who is a psychiatrist, neuroscientist, health tech entrepreneur, and inventor. And we're really uh, delighted to have him today. Welcome to the show, Dr. Raven. Thanks so much for having me, Wendy. It's a pleasure to be here. Absolutely. So uh, last time I saw you, we were doing a town hall for the Walk for Change. It's really great to see you again. Um, Likewise. So today, we're going to talk about a device that, uh, that you invented. Um, and it's uh, called Apollo Neuroscience. It's a wearable wellness device. So first I'd like to, you to explain what that means exactly. So uh, Apollo is a technology that was developed at, out of my work at the University of Pittsburgh uh, on treatment resistant trauma. So we, uh, starting in 2014, I was working with um, a number of other physicians and, and neuroscientists looking at new ways that we could intervene in the process of negative intrusive thinking and the way that, um, and, and sort of try to help get to the root of why some of us are struggling to overcome trauma, knowing that we can't prevent it before it happens, we could at least do what, the best we can to provide better support afterwards and trying to look at ways that technology could help assist in that process. Um, we do, we've been trained as psychiatrists and therapists to do a really nice job of this in psychotherapy in the office. But the problem is that we found is as good as we can do in the office when we are work, when we are hours complete and our clients leave, um, there is still a lot of work to be done. And, and oftentimes when our clients leave and go back into a situation that they previously identified as um, dangerous or unsafe or threatening, then it prevents them from being able to make a lot of and implement a lot of the meaningful change that we, um, you know, really make progress on in the office or in the clinic. So we started to look at these different techniques for intervening and helping assist the patients or our clients on the go. And ultimately, uh, what we found is through an enormous literature review and an enormous amount of experimentation between 2014 and 2017, we found that there were very specific frequencies of vibration that are like basically sound waves that we can adjust so that you feel them through your skin, but you don't actually hear them. And that this activates our touch receptors in our skin in a way that delivers a signal to our brains that says, if I have time to pay attention to this feeling in this moment, then I can't possibly be running from a lion right now. Wow. And, and, and that's the same pathway actually as the pathway of deep breathing. When you take a deep breath, the fact that we're paying attention to the breath coming into our nose and mouth and into our lungs sends an immediate signal to our brain that's actually pre-conscious or subconscious that first says, if I have the time to pay attention to this feeling of air coming into my body, again, I can't possibly be running from a lion right now because my body would not allow me to divert my attention to this feeling if I was in acute, immediate survival danger. Right. And, and this, yeah. yeah. And the same thing with human touch. Sure. What you're talking about is, is fight or flight, right? Right. Um, and, and stimulating different parts of your nervous system. There's one side that is for fight or flight and mm -hmm. one that is more for relaxation, right? Right. So it sounds like this device helps to stimulate the one that's for uh, relaxation or get your brain to do it. Right, which and that part of the nervous system is called the parasympathetic side of the nervous system. And I think you know ultimately what we learn about trauma in in training, whether we're client, you know, we're clients and victims of trauma ourselves, or whether we are practitioners and caregivers, um, is that overcoming trauma is something that and and rebalancing this fight or flight and recovery nervous system activity is something that we all have the ability to do. It's built into us. Um, to be able to control the system. Breath is one way to do it. Touch is another way to do it. Um, the problem is that our bodies and our nervous systems work in a very much practice makes perfect kind of way. So the more that we experience stress and trauma, the more that we, and the longer that trauma is allowed to exist within us without resolution or processing, then the more we train ourselves to be in a traumatized or fight or flight state all the time. And this can be caused by, this doesn't have to be caused by a serious what, we, what one might consider to be a very significant trauma, it can be caused by too many responsibilities at work, too many emails, too much disapproval, neglect, um, any kinds of things that overwhelm us on a continuous basis uh, can cause this. And one of the phenomena that we talk about that was actually announced 
in the public eye or brought to the public eye in a more serious way in 2019 was burnout due to work-related stress, which was now being discussed by the WHO as a major issue that needs to be tackled and addressed. So, um, you know, Apollo is, is a technology like, that can be just another tool in the toolbox that we all have access to that can help us rebalance our nervous systems at a time where we were previously overwhelmed, stressed out, and having trouble adjusting to ch rapidly changing situations in our environment, which can really impact all of us. So while the technology was developed for PTSD, as I was telling you on one of our prior conversations, we actually found ourselves that using it ourselves in the hospital, using it on our uh, colleagues in the lab, entrepreneurs, CEOs, fighter pilots, um, you know, people of all these different backgrounds who work very stressful jobs got great benefit from using it. And so that's why we made it a, a wellness technology so that anybody could access it without having to go to your doctor and have your doctor write a prescription right. for it. That, that was brilliant, really, because it makes it more accessible to people. There are people who have suffered trauma who may, it may be too difficult even to go in and get help from someone, mm -hmm. but if they see this device and they think it might help them, they can still access it and help themselves. I love that about it. Um, you know, I, I'm a multiple trauma victim myself, and I use, I have a big toolbox of things that I use um, for triggers, you know, but I have to remember to use them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that can be really difficult when you're in the middle of a situation that's really uh, triggering past things um, and, and causing so much pain, emotional pain, sometimes physical pain, right? Yeah, of course, yeah. yeah. So this device, actually works with you without you having to remember. Is that true? For the most part, I mean, it, I mean, it helps to remember to turn it on, but once, right. you put, yeah, but, what, but the yeah. point, but the point is you don't have to take time out of your day in any significant way to use it. And that's right. something that's really hard for all of us. You know, many of us have very busy lives. We work very hard. And so, you know, taking time out of our normal routines to start a deep breathing practice or a meditation practice or a yoga practice, as good as, as that might be for our health, can be very difficult to start to institute and really integrate into our uh, regular routines. So having something that you can just put on in the morning and then press a button and it turns on and starts to give you a little bit of that, that boost to help you us you know feel more balanced and feel what it actually is like to be in a meditative state more often, just helps us to remember that we can access these states on our own and the importance of trying to be in these states as often as possible because that is a critical factor in enhancing our ability to recover. So when we're stressed out all the time, basically the short of it is that all of our precious resources are diverted away from our recovery system, which is critical for sleep, creativity, reproduction, digestion, food absorption, you know, energy restoration, and all of those things that make us feel good, empathy, that make us connect to others, right? All of these things that make our lives rewarding and, and, and fun um, are require this recovery system to turn on. And when we have the recovery system on, when we're actually, um, and allow our, allowing ourselves to recover in a context of safety, it allows us to perform better in the long run and more consistently. And so Apollo, is, is really used for that. And I think the whole, one of the, going back to access, I think it's really important to mention that trauma is still very stigmatized in our society, right? Even amongst healthcare providers. And this is a huge issue because we are all traumatized in some way. And when we refuse to acknowledge that that's the case, ultimately what happens is we deny ourselves the, the care and the treatment that we need to feel better. And in healthcare, this is a particularly big problem because if we as healthcare providers admit that we have a mental illness or sim significant symptoms of trauma, we can actually lose our license to practice medicine. Wow. And what, wow. could be, what could be more scary than, and stigmatizing than that, right? And so now the idea is what we're saying is, hey guys, we figured out through, with the, with the help of all these other scientists that came before us, how to create, use technology to generate a therapy that you can wear that can help you feel better and work through your own trauma more effectively so that you don't need to worry about admitting that you're traumatized. We already admit and accept from the get-go that we all have some degree of trauma, whether that's from our training or anything else that might've happened in our lives. Right. So now there's a tool for you to use that can help that doesn't stigmatize you in any particular way. Wow, so not only for uh, the general public, but for health providers, for anyone who's in a stressful job too, but that is amazing to me. So the very profession where you're helping people, you can be stigmatized for having any of these same issues 
it doesn't make any sense. There's so much change <laughs> that happened in our health system. One thing I noticed also about the device when I was reading about it is that it can actually generally help people to increase focus. Um, how does that work? So that's a, that's a great question. Um, and I agree with you, a lot does need to change in our profession. And I think, you know, if there is any silver lining with, with the pandemic that we're all facing right now, I think it is that we're all starting to realize that we all have some degree of trauma that's undeniable. Um, and so that is forcing us to reevaluate and reappraise the way we approach this. And really with a focus on frontline healthcare providers who are struggling more than anyone right now. Right. Um, and, or, um, you know, as much as anyone could that's be struggling. Right. Right. Um, yeah. And especially with the responsibilities that they have. But going back to the focus thing, I think this is really critical, which is that our attention, our attention is our single most important commodity, for lack of a better term, that we have as humans where we focus our attention is directly impacting how we feel and what basically we allow to come into our awareness or our consciousness and allow us to to exter to interpret meaning from our world and so if we are focused on the news all the time or things that are really aggressive and angry toned or things that are, you know, or advertisements that are trying to get us to buy things and make us afraid or whatever it might be, then right. this is the input that shifts our attention and, and causes us to change the way we think or maybe have more negative intrusive thoughts. And we see this all the time as psychiatrists. So I think that, you know, when you think about focus, Focus is a fat factor of this balance between the sympathetic fight or flight system and the parasympathetic rest and digest recovery system. When we are in a survival state because we, or a fight or flight state because our bodies or our minds perceive threat from the environment, all of our attention gets directed via tunnel vision mm -hmm. to, and we know this because our eyes change in response to this threat, our, our pupils change, our lenses change, our, and, and we change the actual way that our eyes respond to the environment into a more tunnel vision state, which directs us specifically to only focus on things that are related to fighting, fleeing, or playing, or, or freezing to get us out of that survival situation. Whatever tactic it might be, it's getting us out of that survival situation that becomes the single most important thing that we focus on but we are not often surrounded by the same kinds of survival threats in our lives now that we had 10, 20, 30,000 years ago that the system evolved to deal with. This system evolved to deal with survival threats like someone trying to, or, or someone or an animal trying to kill us or our families, um, loss of food, loss of um, water, loss of air, or lack of shelter and protection and safety. Survival so, stuff, right? <laughs> yeah, core yeah. survival stuff. But now it's like, it's become attributed to emails and responsibilities and family stuff and work stuff and pandemics and all of these other things that are going on around us that aren't necessarily causing an immediate threat to us, but they cause a perceived long-term threat that financial stress, right? Legal stress, all of these things are, should be included in that. And so when we start to, our, when we allow our bodies to react in a, in a, in a way that is consistent with perceiving threat from these experiences without checking ourselves, what happens is our attention only gets focused on survival with respect to those things. So as soon as you start doing deep breathing or biofeedback or um, using something like Apollo, which brings you back into the present, all of these techniques are well known in the field of neuroscience to improve focus because they improve attention control by bringing us back into the moment which is where the thing we actually need to focus on is right now, right. right? So if we're constantly thinking about what we're afraid of in the future, then it's literally taking our precious attention resources out of the present into the future or into the past and what's happened to us before, not where our attention matters most, which is right now. And when we bring our attention back into the moment right now and right here, it reminds us that we have the ability to actually change the outcome of our future. We're about at the end of our interview Unfortunately, I could probably talk to you all day about this. So thank you again for having me. I really appreciate it. It was a pleasure. Um, and I'm sure we can have more, uh, more great conversations in the future. Yeah. Um, if you want to learn about me or my, my medical practice and sort of the work that I do on the whole, um, you can check out my, my website, drdave.io. And um, you can reach out to me through that website, or you can reach out to me on social media at, at Dave Raven on Twitter or at Dr. David Raven on Instagram. And if you'd like to learn more about Apollo, 
um, and that technology, check out apolloneuro.com. That's A-P-O-L-L-O-N-E-U-R-O.com. And we are in the green zone. Today, our guest is Alice Mangan, owner and proprietor of Alice CBD. Welcome to the show, Alice. Hi, thank you, Wendy. Happy to oh, be here. I'm so glad you're here. We've communicated a little bit over, uh, over the internet, and so it's nice to see your face. Um, and so today, I want to talk about um, the products that you have, but I'd like to start by talking about how you came to working with CBD and owning this shop um, through your own journey. How did that happen? Um, uh, I joined the military before I even got out of high school, went on active duty for about five and a half years, um, came out with some kids and a marriage and a lot of stresses and didn't realize it, but um, some health issues that would later show up as a result of my military service. Um, things like depression and anxiety, but then it's kept culminating into uh, what became autoimmune disorders and multiple sclerosis, fibromyalgia, and a whole list of other ones. Mm -hmm. Opiates and injections were what the VA offered me, and you know, $70,000 injections are nothing to sneeze at, but that's what I kind of was resorting to for my MS because I was scared it was gonna uh, progress. Sure. At the same time, my sister was coming down ill with a lot of autoimmune, basically endogenous cannabinoid deficiencies. And I mean, hindsight's 2020. Uh, I was watching some of the veteran groups who started talking about using cannabis as an alternative to the opiates and the, um, the uh, medicines that we got from the VA. I put my name in the hat and they took 22 of us uh, veterans out to Colorado to look at cannabis as medicine. Really? How exciting was that? Wow. Um, I was, I was going to say, you know, um, you know, thank you for your service to, the, to our country. And it's, it breaks my heart when I see uh, that the VA is, is not open to cannabis. So this is a great story that I, I can't mm -hmm. wait to hear more. Yeah. yeah. So while I was out there for um, about four days, I had already you know, started going through a lot of these issues for over 15 to 20 years. During that time, I was a registered nurse. I had lost my ability to even um, drive. So I definitely wasn't practicing um, with my license anymore. I was in the bed off and on for about six years. Diet was very difficult because lactose intolerant, uh, glucose or uh, lactose, gluten, those kind of things seemed to irritate and flare up inflammatory issues. While I was in Colorado, I didn't have to use my Zofran. I was able to eat things like cheese and pasta. Uh, I didn't have any sleeping issues. I came back and for about 10 or 15 days, I felt like I still had relief and didn't even want my opiates until about day 10 to 15, the pain started coming back, the inflammation started coming back. And at first I thought I had gotten addicted to marijuana. I'm a nurse and good people don't do bad things like drugs. I had to educate myself real fast and in doing so I learned why yeah. this is part of what we should have considered as a food supplement, you know, an essential right. nutrient. Right. Yeah, it's so interesting. The stigma is so great and it's ingrained in us. And so we automatically think we're doing something wrong. And you see reactions from people, everything from when you say you're a cannabis user to kind of like nudge, nudge, laughing to, oh my gosh, that's a drug, you know? Um, so that's all in there, even though you saw such relief, you know, um, while you were in Colorado. So as a result of the study, did that uh, improve access uh, through the VA? No, not, not, not yet. It wasn't even a study. It was just a collective of, of people that cared about veterans enough uh, to drag us out to Colorado and look as an alternative. Then we came back to our state of Missouri to advocate and try and get it legalized. That's where my road took me. Um, at the same time, I was willing to look at THC as my main focus, because that's kind of what we focused on while we was in Colorado. It's a recreation state. That's what we had access to. Sure. 
But with my sister's situation, it turned into, I had to find a CBD product with almost no THC in it because she couldn't test hot. I was willing to be illegally healed, not legally dead. Right. She didn't want to lose her kids. Sure. I just so many, it's so complicated, you know. Um, it's super which, complicated. <laughs> it shouldn't be, but, but unfortunately it is. People have to think about their job, even in states where it's medically legal, it still doesn't mean that your job will keep you if you test positive uh, for, for THC. So there's, there's so many issues surrounding it. Um, but it seems like the experience was so life-changing for you. It became your life's work. It, it did. Um, after trying to find something for my sister, because THC marijuana was easy for me to find if I wanted to find it. Sure. They made products that actually worked mm -hmm. and actually nourished the body in a way that was measurable and you know obvious to the person or at least the family members could tell that's um we tried like six different cbds i felt like we were getting ripped off we tried two different pill forms and then this uh ugly black paste came across the internet uh -huh. that looks like rso or rsho is what we call it because it's from hemp instead of the uh higher levels of thc with marijuana but this is what we used to get her off of opiates and benzos within 45 days. It was nasty. She did not like the taste of it, but you know what? She has her kids. She's not had a wreck in over three years from being off of the opiates. Wow. And she's still alive. And you know, the longer you're depressed or the longer you're on opiates, the more terminal you become. You know, after five years, those people get hopeless. Yeah. They it's, look at things like suicide. Absolutely. Um, you know, many people who are on opiates have other emotion, emotional issues, you know, depression, anxiety, and, you know, the medical field wasn't, I guess, you know, really they just didn't have anything else um, for pain, you know, except opiates, things that are in that category. And so they, they don't think about these other effects, um, or if they do, they don't have any solution. You know, the health system really offers us pills, tests, and surgery. That's what they've got. And so you did your own investigating and tried different things and found some things. So it's amazing. And so you were holding up the RSHO and um, how would, how do people use that? So, you know, I've used uh, RSO and, and or FICO, whatever you want to call it, um, at various points in my health journey. Um, but I had never tried what you're calling paste, which is essentially the, the same as RSO, but from hemp. And um, so how would people use that and how effective is it without the THC in it? So with ours, we do have minute amounts of THC. It's just below the federal limit. So it's below, you know, that 0.3%. So it is considered a hemp product. Um, it still has a lot of its waxes and chlorophyll and by which we believe that that keeps the canaflavins as well. Those flavonoids and stuff also have beneficial properties. Chlorophyll has beneficial properties. But then being a full spectrum and having those other terpenes that make it have that earthy or piney taste or maybe a little peppery taste when it comes from beta caryophylline. Um, this black paste, we I say you can use it in, you can use it on, or you can use it up. And Okay, so all those groups, <laughs> so in your mouth, on your skin, and or in uh, your anal cavity, right? So you Correct. can flick it as a suppository. So, exactly. Yeah. So I usually put, you know, a, a grain of rice up to a pea size amount. This is a pretty large amount for me. So I would squeeze off what would be about the size of a grain of rice or two and rub it on my gums mm -hmm. or put it on like my bulging discs or the area that I had the MS plaques that used to cause my arm to be really bad mm -hmm. or we have vegan gel capsules. Oh. We can tell you how to make a suppository with coconut butter, shea butter, um, some of those essential fats, but you can also put it in a little vegan gel capsule and use that as a way to insert. And I just fill it, you know, about a third of the way full or about the amount of a pea. Right. And the reason why using it as a suppository, uh, yield so much benefits is because we believe that there's about 70% that gets absorbed rectally versus 20 to 30% orally. Oh, and that's wow. because it bypasses the liver first, goes into circulation, then gets to the liver to be uh, metabolized out. 
Wow, that is amazing. So if someone's in quite a bit of pain, taking it um, rectally might, might be a good route to nip that pain in the butt, get it, so to speak, <laughs> and, 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 uh, and reduce it quickly. Mm -hmm. so, it can, absolutely. I'd love to talk a little bit about BCP because I know that that is an element of, of a lot of your products. Yes. Yes. The beta caryophylline is what kind of gives it that little bit of spicy uh, taste because it's also a molecule that's in things like uh, peppers, cinnamon, oregano. I think beta caryophylline is a great way to help with pain and inflammation. And because I'm not talking about CBD or anything, I can say that about the beta caryophylline because it, you know, there's, there's, there's medical evidence with that. And I actually know a person that has a patent on BCP out of Tulsa. Mm -hmm. So I'll have to share more on that at another time. But the beta caryophylline works on the trip D receptor. And so that's ones that's known to, um, to be in pain syndromes and such. Right. Also nausea or hyperemesis when they talk about doing the hot showers for the cyclic vomiting or something like that. Trip V receptors are, um, are, are modulating in that. And that's, that's how good. you can use the beta caryophylline to smell, rub across the vagus nerve, put it in the belly button, those kind of places. Sure. That's really good to know. Um, mixed with the CBD, it must just boost the benefit, I, I'm guessing? It, does. it boosts the benefit. It helps carry it across the blood-brain barrier, as well as the cannabis plant already produces a lot of it. Well, Alice, I, we're already close to the end of our time together. I can't believe it. Um, I'd love to talk with you sometime about uh, the patches and inhalation and there's so many different topics. So would you, look, would you like to come back uh, and be in the green zone later in the season? Yes, please. As a nurse, I love to discuss routes of administration because there's so many benefits and goals we can achieve by knowing the direction, duration, and dosage. Right, right, right. right. And, you know, it, it's really important because I don't know that everyone understands that there are many routes. And if one doesn't work for you, you can try something else. Um, so where can people find you? They can find us. Um, our website is www.alicecbd.com. And then we have a CBD help by Alice CBD on Facebook, where I like to share a lot of our scientific um, peer-reviewed information and mm -hmm. articles. Well, thanks again for joining us. everybody and welcome to a, another segment of simple conversation slash li little philosophies uh today i have comedian xavier claiborne uh also in studio uh i hope you can tell him apart it's a uh, editor-in-chief of a uh, nashville high school newspaper uh xavier claiborne and uh rounding out in third is uh again hope you can recognize them from the other two is two time spelling bee runner up Xavier Claiborne. Welcome to the show. How are you doing? Are you talking to this Xavier Claiborne or a different Xavier Claiborne? If you okay, so if you can see me, I'm talking to you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Hello, okay. thank you for having me on the show. Happy yeah. to be one of three Xavier Claiborne's. Yeah, you're, you're, you're my favorite. I guess I'll figure out which one I am. Yeah. Eventually. Yeah. I mean, there's three options. Um, mm -hmm. So we can talk about, I don't know, I want to talk about spelling bees today. I mean, I do a lot of things you don't know of. What do you do? Oh, we could have talked about Alfredo sauce. I kind of do want, I do, I do want to dive into how to Alfredo make sauces. Sauce. Oh, that, I meant to send you the link to the, the recipe. recipe. Yeah. yeah. So what made you want to do the show, spell it out? What about an online spelling be just called out to you? I don't know. It was kind of just something that um, crossed my mind. And I think it was because of all the stuff I was watching at the time. Um, like I'll listen to a lot of different 
game shows or like game show podcasts. And then uh, every now and then they would have a game. I'd be like, oh man, that'd be really fun to do that. And then I realized no one was doing any sort of like spelling bee type thing. Mm -hmm. And growing up, I had done a couple of spelling bees. My little brother did some spelling bees. And so it's kind of always been something in the back of my mind. And when I came up with a couple of names for games, it just clicked and then I made it. Everything I make is to make the people around me stronger because I think that's how you really become successful mm -hmm. and so with on the spot that we did together I came up with that because I noticed people around me were constantly using the same material over and over again and no one was like being pushed to write something new and so with a show like that you have to be on the top of your game mm-hmm and so now I notice myself using autocorrect with every single sentence. And so I was like, I have to do something about this. And uh, after I made the show, I've gone back and I will spell check everything by hand. I turned off autocorrect. Mm -hmm. And so if you get a bunch of misspelled uh, <laughs> text from me, that is why. Uh, but I'm working on it. Because I remember uh, Bill and I said something years back when I saw him on campus about how if you're the smartest person in the room you'll never learn anything mm -hmm. and so I always want to surround myself with people who are constantly trying to be the best version of themselves and so everything I make will try to push them to do something new because yeah. I think that's and important I yeah I think that's what art should have a little nugget in you know in any like mm -hmm. art venture it should be you know to not only show what the world is or what it could be but just to kind of like motivate movement mm -hmm. motivate a reaction that something is different than what it was before mm. yeah i don't think i could ever be complacent yeah i was doing something new yeah Do i that. want it to be a game yeah. You know, I don't want it to be like, ah, uh, you dumb, you can't spell. Like, it has, <laughs> I want it to be a fun thing to do with my friends. Yeah. So, constantly working, trying to find new things. And it's not easy, but I'll figure it out. You will. I believe in you. You're a top notch <laughs> kid. Am I? <laughs> <laughs> So you must have like loved spelling bees. Were you like in a bunch as a kid or? I, really, I kind of loved everything when I was a kid. Like I mm -hmm. was the kid who would sign up for anything I could possibly do. Just cause, I don't know. I like learning new things and pushing myself to try something new. I've always noticed since I was very little, I love taking things apart and figuring out how they work. And I think at the time, that's how I came to spelling bees. Because I think at the same time, I was in like the chess club and all these other things. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of pushed itself to throughout my whole life with like uh, engineering and college and now even with comedy now. So I just love learning how to take things apart, put it back together and make it the most efficient version it can be. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people do that when it comes to spelling bees. And I have a lot of respect for anyone who can dedicate themselves to any sort of craft, no matter what it is. And so I have a lot of respect for people who still do spelling bees. Yeah. I, I never thought of it as a, as a craft. Yeah. I didn't really think about it as like a, like you're working mm -hmm. like a puzzle in your mind. It's not just memory. You're kind of like working it out. You know, some people that's their passion. Yeah. Especially these kids growing up and knowing that they can make a living from that, I think is really cool. What was I gonna oh that's what I was gonna say. <laughs> okay, you scared me. Um <laughs> there's a ghost. Um no, there's a um did you know about um what's his name? Alfonso I'm talking about Ribeiro? Carlton. Yeah. Yeah. It's Alfonso Ribeiro, I'm pretty sure. He had a game show called hmm. Spellmagatron. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. Spellmageddon. There we go. Like Armageddon, but Spellmageddon. He had a game show called Spellmageddon. 
I haven't watched it, but I didn't know. Spell Megatron. <laughs> I thought there was a T in here. No, I the thought there was an R. The Decepticon. Yeah. Spell Megatron. No, I didn't know that. Where can people find where to watch Spill It Out? How do, how do we find it? On anything you normally watch or listen to stuff. It's on uh, YouTube, Apple uh, Podcasts, Spotify, SoundCloud, and Stitcher. Do you want people to follow you on social media? Sure. Uh, it's Claiborne Xavier on Instagram. Uh, I have a Twitter, but I just use it to post memes. And that's it. <laughs> All right. We'll hit you up on uh, season six. Real season four right now. Oh, okay. I knew that. I watched the show. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was gonna... ending. You want to run it back again? No, I'm using the one we did that we just did. The ending? We just did it. So it's over now. No, because I have another question I'm going to put before the ending. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm future Xavier or I'm past Xavier? Because this would be before to... the your thing future, we just did. Your future Xavier pretending to be past Xavier. So you have to pretend to be past Xavier. Like you don't know that the show's already over when you're talking. Okay. Got it. It feels like I'm in an X-Men movie, but okay. Uh-huh. And on today's musical segment, sponsored by 131 Inclusion Gallery, we have FPTV's very own Blair Hastings with an original song, Let You Go. for anyone to see even if i freed my mind i couldn't get my mind from you i try to pull you back and do it if i wanted to every time i close my eyes i see you looking back at me back, back at me logic doesn't surpass matters either
it's been a fantastic show. It's been an amazing show, Wendy. Uh, I, it was so great to see Mika again. I think yes. we haven't seen her maybe since season two, I think. It's been, it's been a little bit. Been yeah, a minute. it's been forever. <laughs> Yeah, and such great music. We got we got to have more music in this week's show. It was nice to meet Travis Tidwell and and uh, and play Catch Me If You Can. Um, that video is amazing. Yes, I was so I was so excited to meet his fabulous hair. Right, you know they're they're adorable. I think they're adorable. The two. Of them. <laughs> <laughs> I can say that because as I've, I've been saying lately, I'm old. So I can say that. <laughs> 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 oh my goodness. Um, well, we're still here largely because of our sponsors. And I want to invite everyone also to subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you're watching on YouTube, just hit that subscribe button. Yeah. It's easy. It's easy. And you know what? While you're while you're uh uh what is it, moseying on by that subscribe button, just go a few inches over and hit that like button too. Nice. Nice. I like the way you think, Topher Kogan. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so our sponsors are Alice CBD, Caris Healthcare, Buffalo Co., 131 Inclusion Gallery, Purely Natural CBD, Highlands Residential Mortgage, Lit Smoking Supplies, NWA Natural Living, and Back to Balance Wellness and Massage. He's been Topher. And she's been Wendy. We'll catch you next time. Bye. Bye.